Hello and welcome to the Horn Report. I'm Stephanie Jackson. And I'm Hunter Jackson. A former UT professor is fighting to change the name of a campus dorm that honors a KKK leader. We'll tell you why UT administrators say it's not worth the trouble. And the Daily Texan editor blasts Texas student media for exploiting students. Their response? Lower student salaries even more. But first, UT held a ceremony Friday to honor members of the university community who passed away last year. The Horn's Andres Quintero has this report. To most, the end of the semester is a happy time, but for some, it is a time where they remember those they lost in the previous year. 173 members of the UT community lost their lives last year. On Friday, May 7th, friends and family of the departed gathered to mourn those who passed away and to remember what they meant to those whose lives they touched. The day began on the main mall with the lowering of the flags to half-mast in honor of those who died. Friends and family then paid their respects by placing flowers at the base of the flags. The event continued in the afternoon with a ceremony which included a reading of all the names of those who died. Today we remember our friends and colleagues in the UT family who have died in the past year. Many of you have mourned them as individuals. This afternoon we mourn them as a community. Throughout the day, those who attended were able to fill out memory cards about loved ones that they had lost. The cards will be put into an archive on campus to ensure that every person that was remembered will always be part of the history of the University of Texas. Death is never an easy thing to cope with, but on Friday, the UT community came together in support of each other and grew stronger in remembrance of those they lost. Andreas Quintero, The Horn. UT law professor Thomas Russell is fighting to change the name of Simpkins Dormitory in North Campus. The residence hall is named after UT law professor and Civil War veteran William Stewart Simpkins. But according to Russell, Simpkins was also a Ku Klux Klan organizer. Ironically, the dorm was once used as housing for African American students. UT officials say that Simpkins' KKK connection is not new to them, but since a name change would require an OK from the Board of Regents, administrators say it's not worth the time or trouble. They also mentioned that since the dorm is scheduled to be torn down at some point in the near future, it's even less likely a change will be made. Most students, however, are unaware of the history of the name. In her final letter to the Texas Student Media Board of Directors, the Daily Texan editor Jillian Sheridan compared working for TSM to, quote, being taken advantage of as cheap labor, supporting the salaries of a ridiculous number of professional staff members. Unfortunately for Sheridan, that cheap labor might be getting cheaper. With profits declining, $489,000 needs to be eliminated from the Texas Student Media's $2.2 million budget. TSM is expected to slash student salaries by 20%, as well as cut back on its summer printing schedule and phase out some of its supplemental sections. Administrative salaries, however, aren't expected to be cut. UT got some extra funds this week. Two grants given to the university will help students majoring in everything from women and gender studies to engineering. The Shell Oil Company gave the university more than $300,000 to increase student interest in geosciences, engineering, and business. Shell has given more than $34 million to UT over the years. The Embry Family Foundation also donated $450,000 to the Center for Women and Gender Studies. The grant will allow the center to develop more classes and fund a women's right conference in 2012. The UT Office of the Registrar has decided to allow students to get credit for getting a C- in a prerequisite. The previous catalog required a C to pass, but was published before the new grading system took effect. So in essence, standards aren't changing. The catalog is simply being updated. The issue is that a C- counts as 1.67 grade points, which is lower than the two grade points required to pass a class. Since the 70 has always been the passing grade, requiring a C on the new system would be the same as requiring a 73 to pass a class. University of Texas leaders showed their support for UT's diverse student body Thursday in front of the state capitol. Officials singled out the importance of Mexican students amid immigration issues with Mexico. The UT administration says that they'll work to keep Mexican students in Texas schools even if an immigration bill similar to Arizona's passes in the Texas legislature. Many UT officials also think that such a bill would make schools in Texas less desirable for Mexican students wishing to study abroad. At least one state representative has already announced that he intends to file similar legislation once session begins in January. And here's Hunter Jackson with this week's crime news. Thanks, Stephanie. A man robbed the Chase Bank on Guadalupe and MLK Thursday afternoon. Police say he casually approached the counter, passed a note to the teller demanding cash, and then walked out. They haven't said yet how much was stolen. 
The report describes the suspect as about 30 years old, 5 foot 9 and 250 pounds. He was last seen wearing a white hat, a blue plaid shirt, and blue jeans. If you have any information about this incident, please ask that you call 472 TIPS. And here's Nick Schwartz with your weekly sports update. Thanks, Hunter. The Texas baseball team is rolling. The Horns have now won 21 straight. The team's most recent series was against Baylor and featured a couple close ones. In the first game, Texas overcame a one-run deficit to tie it up and scored two runs in the top of the 10th. The second went to 14 innings, with Jordan Weymouth delivering a walk-off single to the left field. The next game wasn't 4-1. to one. With the wins over Baylor, the Longhorns set the Big 12 record for most consecutive league wins with 17. And the Longhorns' last victim was Prairie View A&M, which they won 6 to nothing. They prepare for their next series at Kansas State starting Friday. I'm Nick Schwartz, and this has been your weekly Horn Sports Update. Back to y'all. Thanks, Nick. Good night. And good luck. <laughs>